take out your Bibles this morning and turn with me in them to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew, the 17th chapter. We have here in Matthew chapter 17 a story of a father who brought his epileptic son to Jesus so that he might be healed. Now Jesus had taken Peter and James and John up on Mount Tabor. Mount Tabor has the distinction of being the highest mountain in that region. From the top of Mount Tabor, you can see all the way, uh, all the way west to Nazareth. From the top of Mount Tabor, you can see all the way north, uh, northeast to the Sea of Galilee. Beautiful view from the top of Mount Tabor, but something very powerful and significant took place on the top of Mount Tabor. You see there, Peter, James, and John witnessed Jesus Christ being transformed into his heavenly glory. It was there on Mount Tabor, we call it the Mount of Transfiguration today, but it was there on Mount Tabor that those disciples, those apostles were there and actually witnessed Jesus as he began to glow with his heavenly glory, the glory he had in heaven. They also watched as he spoke with Moses and Elijah. And then something powerful and profound took place. They heard the voice of God the Father himself saying and declaring, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Listen to what he has to say. Isn't it interesting? Out of all the things God the Father could say, what a lengthy discourse he could have given. But he only de declared two things. This is my son. I love him. You need to listen to what he has to say. Can I get an amen this morning? Now, after this glorious experience, Jesus comes down off of the mountain into the valley to discover there's a major controversy brewing there in the valley. As I mentioned earlier, a father had brought his demon-possessed, epileptic son to Jesus' disciples, but the disciples could not cure him. They could not deliver him. They could not set him free. So the crowd was in an uproar and the religious leaders were arguing with the disciples. I want to ask you a question this morning. How many times does this happen in our lives? I want you to think about it now. How many times does this happen in our lives? We come off of a mountaintop experience with God just to come down into the valley and be hit with a life crisis. As, as Pastor Wright this morning, we spent time with God in God's presence. We were in a powerful church service, a powerful time of worship. God is moving in our hearts and lives in a wonderful way. We come off of that mountaintop experience just to be confronted by a life crisis. But I want to tell you, Jesus was in control of that situation, folks, just like he is in control of the situations and circumstances of our life. Can I get an amen this morning? Praise God, praise God. I want us to see this morning how Jesus used this crisis as a teachable moment. He was completely in control. Let's see how he used this crisis situation as a teachable moment. Follow along with me. Look down until you find a verse 14. Matthew chapter 17, beginning at verse 14. Follow along as I read this account here. Matthew 17, verse 14, reading out of the New King James Version. It says, And when they had come to the multitude, when Jesus... Uh, when Jesus had come, when Peter and James and John had come with him, the other disciples were already there. It says, when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why, uh, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, 
and nothing, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Let's pray this morning. Precious Heavenly Father, we are so blessed, so honored, Father, to be in your presence, dear Lord God. To be honored by you coming in a very special way and receiving our worship, receiving our praise to you. And now, Lord, we can sense your Holy Spirit presence ministering in our heart, ministering in our mind, ministering in our spirit. You are welcome, Father. You are welcome, Lord Jesus. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. Not just into this house, this building, but into the true temple of God. That's every one of your children that are here today. Father God, draw us as your children into a deeper walk, into a more profound faith, dear Lord God, into a deeper trust in you. Let us see the mountains of our life move, dear Lord God. And for those that are here today who do not have a relationship with you, let today be the day that that all changes in their life. And Father God, draw each of us to you and we give you praise in the precious name of Jesus. And all the saints of God said... Amen. See, Jesus used the illustration of the largest mountain in the area, coupled with the seemingly impossible need of a demon-possessed boy to show that he is a mountain-moving God. Amen? Jesus is a mountain-moving God. As a matter of fact, faith in God moves mountains. Amen? Faith in God moves moves mountains. I want you to say that with me this morning. Faith in God moves mountains. But I want to tell you this this morning. Mountains do not move on their own. I'm just a country boy from Pennsylvania. I spent the beginning years of my life running up one mountainside and down the next. I know what it's like to be lost in the valley and I know what it's like to be on top of the mountain and I know every place in between. And those mountains in Pennsylvania did not move on their own. Matter of fact, growing up I thought those mountains were permanent structures that could not be changed. But I was there during the time period where they were stripping all of the coal out of the mountains and I was amazed to watch how they could totally tear a mountain down and then build it back up again. But I want to tell you this morning, I'm not talking about natural mountains. And Jesus might have been using Mount Tabor as an illustration, but he was not talking about a physical mountain. He was talking about something more important to us. You see, there are problems in life that given enough time will work themselves out. You understand what pastor is saying? There are situations, there are problems, there are difficulties. They are hard problems. They are hard problem, uh, challenges. They are difficulties. But if they're given enough time, if they're given enough prayer, if they're given enough patience, they will work themselves out. These are not, these are not mountains. These are bumps in the road. These are bumps in the road. Pastor, why do you bring that up at the beginning? Because I need us to understand uh, something that's important about life. Those who see every setback as a major crisis live their life in constant turmoil. Those who see every problem, every challenge, every difficulty that comes into their life as a major crisis live their life in constant turmoil. The enemy is able to keep that individual stirred up all the time. The enemy is able to keep that person discouraged all the time. The enemy is able to keep that person overwhelmed all of the time. And I need for us to understand there might be challenges, there might be difficulties, but these aren't mountains. They will work out. You just need to be faithful. We need to learn how to not turn every molehill into a mountain. Can somebody say amen? Now, I, I don't know about y'all. I'm going to take this one step further this morning. I've got enough going on in my life. I don't need any extra drama. Can I get an amen this morning? Are you with me? Got enough going on in our lives. I don't need to create drama. I just don't need to do it. And so I've got to tell you, folks, if you're here this morning and it seems like your life is constant drama, then this message is for you today. 
I've got some things I'm going to share in just a moment that are life transformational for you, but we've got to start with the understanding that not everything in your life is a mountain just because the enemy wants it to appear that way. Can I get an amen? However, there are those troubles that when they come into your life, they want to set up residency. Anybody know what pastor is talking about? There are those troubles and difficulties that they are big problems and big difficulties and big challenges. And whenever they move into your life, whenever they come into your life, they want to set up residency. They want to become a permanent part of your life situation. See, the father in our text had tried to give his son a normal life. As a matter of fact, I dare venture to say today that he had tried to learn how to live with a demon-possessed epileptic son. That doesn't make any sense, does it? But I believe that's exactly what had happened. The father had gotten to the place where he was trying to figure out how to live with a demon-possessed epileptic son, how to watch out and protect for his son and just, and just succumb to the fact that his son was demon-possessed and he was always going to be demon-possessed. His son was epileptic. He was always going to be epileptic. He, he tried to learn how to live with that, but this was a problem that was not going to go away on its own. Folks, we need to understand that we do not want to call every problem a mountain, but when we, we need to acknowledge the mountains when they do come into our life. See, ignoring a problem will not make it go away. Pretending it's not there will not make it go away. We need to take an honest assessment of our situation. It's so important for us to be honest to ourselves and honest to others, amen? Amen and particularly honest with God. As we take a look at our life situation, we need to make an honest assessment of that life situation. Look at every aspect of it. Look at what is going on in our life. And we need to admit there's a very real problem. I was thinking this morning, and gentlemen, I'm sorry, I'm going to pick on us first. I find it very interesting for all of us men, particularly myself, having come through the illness I just came through, that we have a tendency to deny we're sick. Well, yeah, I feel a little rough. You need to go to the doctor. Oh, I don't need to go to the doctor. But your arm is hanging off at the elbow. It's just a scratch. I'm okay. And so, gentlemen, there are times when things are going on in our life and they are serious situations in our life. They are mountains that need to be dealt with. And if we're not honestly assessing the situation, that's no big deal. I've seen worse things than that before. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Well, we need to look at it in the real way. Ladies, I picked on the men first, but the reality is still there. Ladies, denial is not just a river in Egypt. We have to be very careful that whenever problems come our way that we do an honest assessment of that problem, of that difficulty, of that challenge and admit there is a real problem here that must be dealt with. We need to determine, uh oh, here we go, pastor's going to dig himself deeper. We need to determine our responsibility in the problem. Can I get an oh me? When we're assessing that, we need to be honest and determine what is my involvement in this problem? What, is my, uh, what am I adding to this problem? How, am I helping or am I hindering? What, what is my responsibility in this problem? And then we need to take the problem to Jesus. Can somebody say amen this morning? See, when the problems in our life turn into mountains, then we've got to turn them over to Jesus. The mountains aren't going to move themselves. As a matter of fact, in order for God to move our mountain, we have to give the mountain to him. We literally, if God is going to get rid of the mountain in our life, we have to literally give the mountain over to him. See, when Jesus asked how long the boy had been this way, the father said, remember what he said? He said, from childhood. From childhood, this boy had suffered this way. 
the father had been overwhelmed by the condition of his son for many, many years. And I am certain that that father tried everything he could possibly think of to give his son relief. But it wasn't until he gave the situation to Jesus that the mountain in his life, the mountain in his son's life finally moved. Amen. No matter what he had tried, it didn't work. It was until he gave it to Jesus that the mountain in his life finally moved. See, trying to handle your mountain will not move your mountain. Come on. Think about that this morning. Trying to handle your mountain will not move your mountain. Talking about the size of your mountain will not move your mountain. Amen? Get on the phone. Can you believe the size of the mountain in my life? Let me text you about it. Here's a Facebook post. This is an illustration about how big my mountain is. My mountain's bigger than your mountain. Talking about how big our mountain is is not going to move your mountain. Talking to Jesus, listen to this folks, talking to Jesus about helping you accept your mountain is not going to move your mountain. Come on now, huh? Oh Jesus, I'm going to help me accept this condition in my life, Lord God. Help me accept where I'm at in my life. Help me to accept the oppression that the enemy is putting on me. Help me accept where my family is at and how they're treating me. Help me accept what's going on. No, no, no. We're not in the business of accepting mountains. Can somebody say amen today? The only way to move your mountain is to give your mountain to Jesus. Now listen, in giving your mountain to Jesus, you can't ask him to take it from you. I want to let that settle in for just a moment. We're talking about giving our mountain to Jesus. You can't ask Jesus to take your mountain from you. You have to give it to him. So what's the difference, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. It would have so messed up this part of my message Have you not asked that question. I have literally witnessed individuals who earnestly and sincerely continue to beg God to take their mountain away. Beg God. Take, oh God, why won't you take this mountain? Why won't you remove it from me? God, don't you love me? Don't you care about me? Do you hear what pastor's saying? What in all that I just said has anything to do with faith? Nothing. It has nothing to do with faith. Whenever you're going to the Lord and you want to give him your mountain, you have to give it to him. You have to release it to him. You have to hand it over to him. You can't say, oh God, please take this from me and keep a grip on it because he won't take it from you. Listen, he won't take it from you until you release it to him until you give it over to him amen in other words you have to relinquish ownership of your mountain then God will take it away there was a man a number of years ago wanted to quit smoking he spent so much time asking God begging God God take the cigarettes away take the addiction away take the desire to smoke away his frustration reached a whole new level whenever he brought one of his co-workers from from work to church and the man gave his heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ and was instantaneously delivered from tobacco and, and smoking and never smoked again after that and the man went home and literally in his living room wept before the Lord and cried out to God and why would you do it for him and not do it for me and the Holy Spirit spoke to him again and said, because you've never given it to me. You keep asking me to take it from you and you're holding on for dear life. Folks, we need to understand that he is a mountain moving God. Can somebody say amen? When we get ready to give up ownership, God is ready to come in mountain moving power. When we're ready to release that mountain over to him. When we're ready to release the control it has over us. When we're ready to release the frustration. When we're ready to release the anxiety. When we're ready to forgive those. Come on now. Are you hearing what pastors say? When we're ready to forgive those who are involved in the situation. That's all part of giving it over to Jesus. Giving it all over to Jesus. When we do that, then he'll come in mountain moving power. You see, faith is the catalyst that moves the hand of our mountain moving God. Faith is the catalyst that moves the hand of our mountain moving God. Need doesn't move the hand of God. 
need doesn't move the hand of God. See, the boy had a need that God was aware of for a number of years, amen? God didn't just become aware of the boy's need when the father brought the young boy to Jesus. God already knew in advance the young man's need. Need isn't the catalyst that moves the hand of God. Determination does not move the hand of God. I am certain that the father had a determination to get help for his son and had done everything he could think of. Religious knowledge does not move the hand of God because the scribes were the religious theologians of the day. Listen, faith. Faith is what prompted Jesus to move the mountain of demonic oppression and possession in the life of that child. It was faith. Mark chapter 9 records the father asking Jesus if he could do anything. Jesus, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Folks, that was the start of faith. Jesus, if you can possibly do anything, I've, I've heard so much about you. I've, I've witnessed your ministry and your preaching and your teaching. I've heard what you've done in the surrounding areas of Galilee. I've, I've heard how you've delivered uh, other demon-possessed individuals. I've heard how you've given sight to the blind. I've heard how you've healed the crippled and the lame. I've heard how you've set people free. Jesus, if you can do anything for us, if you can do anything for us, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus then told the father what was needed to move the mountain right after that. Right after he was asked, Jesus said, this is what you need to know. This is what you need to know to move the mountain. He said, if you can believe, if you can believe, if you can believe all things are possible to them to believe. Jesus, the son of God, the creator of all things, the one who spoke the worlds into existence said, if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out through his tears, Lord, I believe, you know the famous words, help my unbelief. What happened next was incredible. Matthew chapter 17, verse 18, And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. You see, the mountains of our life will move out of the way when we place our faith in a mountain-moving God. The mountain you're dealing with in your life will move out of the way when you place your faith in a mountain-moving God. See, faith that God already knows the size of your mountain. The devil wants to lie to you. The devil wants you to believe that God doesn't fully understand everything that you're going through. The devil wants you to believe that God doesn't know the size of your mountain and how deep the roots are and how other people have affected you in your life. The devil wants you to believe that God doesn't know and he's too busy to fully understand and so the weight of this mountain has to be carried on your shoulders but I want to tell you today that God already knows the size of your mountain can we get an amen? amen faith that God cares about your need faith that God really truly cares about you have you ever tried to share with somebody something that you're going through and you realize that they're not getting it. Anybody? You, you've tried to talk to another individual, even a caring individual. Tried to get them to understand your heart and what you're going through and the pain that you're dealing with. And they just don't quite get it. As a matter of fact, I've, I've witnessed individuals doing that. Trying to share with somebody else what's going on with them. And by the time they were done sharing with that person what was going on with them, the other person turned around and said, well, I know what you're going through because I went through that too and started telling all their whole story of what they went through. <laughs> Folks, let Pastor give you just a little bit of a clue. When somebody's sharing their heart with you, they really don't want to hear all about your problems. <laughs> they want somebody who cares about what they're going through. They want somebody to listen to them and pray for them. And just because God took care of your situation that way doesn't mean he's going to take care of their situation that way. Amen. 
We've got to keep God in the equation. When somebody's talking to us about their need, we need to be praying, Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. Holy Spirit, tell me whether to keep my mouth shut or tell me what to say. Holy Spirit, I'm praying even now while the person's still talking. And I pray you'll come in your anointing and in your power right into the middle of this situation. Amen. We need to understand that God cares. God cares. Listen, listen to what pastor is about ready to say. Even if you brought it on yourself. Even if you messed up big time and the mountain that's setting on your shoulders is a mountain of your own design, I want you to hear this morning the voice of the Lord speaking to you. God cares about your need because he cares about you. Can somebody say amen to that this morning? God knows the size of your mountain and he cares about your need. We need to understand, we need to realize those things. But listen, we have to have faith that God is bigger than any mountain in our life. Amen. Your God is bigger than your mountain. Come on. Your God is bigger than your mountain. It might seem overwhelming, but God is bigger than your mountain. Faith that he can, that he is a mountain moving God ready to move the mountain in your life. Not only is he a mountain moving God, but he is ready to move the mountain in your life. Pastor, you don't know how long I've been dealing with this mountain. If God was going to move it, he'd have moved it already. Lie. That's a lie. That's like the person who was afraid to fly told me one time, Pastor, if the Lord wanted me to fly, he'd have given me wings. You see, God is working out a plan, amen? God had never forgot you. He never forgot your situation. He never forgot your need. He knows exactly where you're at, and he's working out a plan in your life. God never sleeps nor slumbers, though Scripture says that his thoughts toward you are more than the stars that are in the heaven. And folks, if you get out on a good, clear night, you can't count the stars in the heaven. So you can't even begin to imagine the thoughts that God has for you. Sir, ma'am, I want to tell you that he's working a plan out for your life, and the Scripture tells me, and Jesus himself tells me, me that we serve a mountain moving God and if we have faith amen if we have faith then he'll move the mountain in our life can you say amen this morning <laughs> faith in God moves mountains amen I want you to say that with me this morning faith in God moves mountains amen see a little faith can move a mighty mountain Matthew chapter 17, verses 19 and 20. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately. See, they had witnessed everything that had happened, everything that was going on, but they were confused. They, they didn't understand all that was taking place. And Jesus, just like he'll do for you and I, whenever we ask him questions, he'll answer those questions for us. So Jesus said to them, they said, why couldn't we cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. Nothing will be impossible for you. See, there's no limit to what God can do in a life of those who put their trust in him. No limit to the life of an individual who can put their trust in him. The scripture tells me, Paul wrote, that if I already have something, then I don't have to wait for it. Sister Fran made me pickled eggs again this year for Easter. Now, she didn't do the normal preparation. Normally, it's a couple of weeks in advance, and she's purchased the, the red beets that go with that, and she's got her pickling jar out, and there's a, a date set when she's going to pickle the eggs, and she was so busy this year, she didn't do all of that pre-egg pickling announcements. So I... Lindsay, I wasn't sure I was going to get pickled eggs this year. So I just wasn't sure. 
But then one day, Sister Fran comes home with some red beets, a couple dozen eggs, and I see the Easter pickling jar out on the counter. Something's about to happen. We're going to have some pickled eggs. Sister Fran's faithful. I didn't, wasn't sure we were going to have pickled eggs, but I, I felt pretty certain. Why? Because she has a good track record of every year making pickled eggs for Easter. We need to realize that God has a good track record. And the scripture tells us that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Another place he says, I, I am the Lord your God. I do not change. He's not fickle in any way. The same God that spoke the worlds into existence, the same God that formed Adam from the dust of the earth, the same God that saw Adam and he had a need for, for a help meet, put him to sleep, took a rib and created Eve, the same God that knew that Eve was going to take from the fruit of the tree of good and evil and give it to Adam, the same God that knew he was going to have to cast Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, the same God that knew that Jesus Christ was going to have to die on the cross of Calvary for you and I. It's the same God that still created us. It's the same God that still loves us. It's the same God that sent Jesus to save us and rescue us. It's the same God that can move the mountain in your life if you'll put your faith and trust in him. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus used a mustard seed to, dis to illustrate the power of a little faith. The power of a little faith. Do you have faith in God? Come on, think about that this morning. Do you have faith in God? Do you trust your heavenly Father? See, that's the key thing. It's trust. Trust. I had to trust Sister Fran was going to make them pickled eggs. Whenever I get up in the morning, I've got to trust that God's going to be with me all through that day. I have to trust when his word says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And I get into some of those places, you, you know... There are sometimes, there's some places, things that happen, stuff that goes on, individuals' needs in their life, and it all looks dark, and it all looks uncertain, and you're wondering where the light of Jesus is. And then I remember that he says, I am God, I do not change. And I put my trust and faith back into him again. And this mountain that seems to be so overwhelming, as I put my faith and trust in God, this mountain too shall go. Amen. Come on. This mountain too shall go. I know I'm looking at some people today who can understand what pastor is about ready to say. I've been in some situations in my life where I felt as though the ship was going down. I'm just being honest with you, as transparent as I can be this morning. I've been in those situations where it seemed that the ship was going down. There were too many holes, too many leaks. There wasn't enough momentum. I had no idea what to do, how to save it, but I knew that God did. Even though I did not understand, even though I did not like it at all, even though I questioned why I had to be in that situation in the first place. Does anybody understand what pastor's talking about? But I wouldn't take my eyes off of Jesus. I wouldn't take my trust off my heavenly father. I kept going back to the word. I kept saying, Jesus, give me the wisdom I need for today. Give me the understanding I need to walk by faith today. Jesus, help me and encourage me and lift me up because my 
spirit's getting really low and I don't see a way out of this darkness. And guess what? Every time I cried out to him, God came to me through his word and he spoke what I needed in that moment, in that time. Folks, I want to tell you, if you're going through a difficult situation, if it seems like you've been walking in darkness for quite some time, if you've been overly discouraged and overly overwhelmed and you're not quite sure what the answer is, and even though you've been praying, you don't see the answer to your prayer coming yet. I want you to know that you serve a mountain moving God. Sir, ma'am, I want you to know that he is a faithful God. If you'll keep your faith in him, if you'll keep your trust in him, if you'll keep walking towards him and not away from him, if you'll keep doing his will and not make it up on your own as you go, if the word says it, say you're going to live by it. Amen. If God wants you to do it, trust him that you're going to walk in that way. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. He's a faithful God. Give your mountain to God. Give your mountain to God. See, that's what makes Paul's statement in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 clear. Brings understanding for us. How could Paul say this? We can realize it after the message I just preached. Paul said, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Lord, the mountain is crushing me right now with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We need to understand that the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding is not God just trying to make us feel good until we get crushed by our mountain. The peace of God that goes beyond all understanding keeps us stable in God's presence while Jesus is working out how he's going to move your mountain. Come on now. Come on now. Amen? Nothing's impossible for God. Amen? And all things are possible to them that believe. Faith in God moves mountains. But I want you to say it this way this morning. Faith in God is moving my mountain. Come on. Faith in God is moving my mountain. Do you have a mountain you're dealing with today? Do you have need of a mountain moving God? You ready to trust him and believe in him? Are you ready to see that mountain taken out of your life and a testimony of the goodness of God placed in the center of your life so that God can use your testimony to encourage others that are under the weight of a mountain? Amen. Come on. Come on. Praise God, praise God. The enemy wants to short circuit you. He wants to weigh you down. He wants to keep you from being fully passionate, a fully passionate follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. But God wants you to be set free. I love what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 36. He said, whom the Son sets free is free in deed. You ready for some more freedom today in the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you stand to your feet as our musicians come back? Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I need a couple of our ushers to come up and help pastor out this morning. Praise the Lord. A couple of our ushers this morning to come up and help pastor out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, I got in my hand a container of mustard seeds. Mustard seeds. Now, I want you to understand that I didn't fast and pray over these and anoint them. I didn't ask for the Holy Spirit to move into them. They have no spiritual significance at all except for being a symbol of your faith. It's your faith that makes all the difference. But as I was preparing for this message, I said, Lord, 
Would you give us something? Would you, would you give? Because we, we as human beings, we need a symbol. We need something that will help us to remember what God has spoke to our heart. Because God is speaking to your heart right now. I know by the Spirit of God, He's ministering in your spirit even now. And the enemy's going to try to steal that from you before you get to the restaurant today. And so I ask God to give us a little symbol. And just like Jesus did, he gave us the symbol of a mustard seed. So this is what I want to invite you to do. I'm going to give these mustard seeds to these two beautiful women here. And I'm going to ask you to come up and get a mustard seed for every one of your mountains. No, you can't take the whole jar. For every one of your mountains, I want you to get a mustard seed. And whenever you take that mustard seed, you're proclaiming by faith a couple of things. One is you're admitting you've got a problem that's a real mountain in your life. The second thing you're admitting is that, Lord, I've got faith to trust in you over this mountain. Amen. As I claim this seed, I'm claiming I got a mountain in my life and I'm also claiming that I've got faith to trust you in this mountain. And then the third thing you're proclaiming is, God, you're going to move this mountain. And as you take that seed, well, this is going to be a real challenge because you have to be careful you don't lose this seed just like you don't want the enemy to take out of your heart what God is speaking to you. I want you to take the seed or the seeds that you get and I want you to find a spot in your Bible because the Word of God is powerful. I want you to find a scripture in your Bible that speaks to your mountain, and then I want you to drop that seed in your Bible. Amen? But this morning, as you come and get that seed, as you come and get that seed, I want you to pray. Holding that seed, I want you to pray in faith and start the process this morning of drawing closer and closer to the Lord. So as you feel led this morning, come and get your seed. Ladies, get ready to pass them out as quickly as you can. Come and get your seed, and after you get your seed, find a place up front here to either set or kneel or stand and begin giving that need, begin giving that mountain over to the Lord this morning. We're going to see God do some incredible things. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Get that seed or those seeds and then find a place to stand or sit or kneel. Praise God in the presence of God. Begin giving that mountain over to Him this morning. Begin giving that mountain over to Him this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, faith is moving in your house today. Faith is moving in your house today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Faith is moving in your house today, Father God. As these seeds are going out, dear Lord God, faith is stirring in our hearts, Lord God. Our faith in you, our trust in you, dear Lord God. Our belief that you are a mountain moving God and that you're no respecter of persons. Lord God, what you've done for one, you will do for another. What you've done for others, you will do for me. You can claim that this morning in the presence of your God, of your King. Hallelujah. Jesus. As you get that seed, begin to confess to him the size of your mountain. Lord God, you know the size of my mountain. Lord God, you know how big and overwhelming it is. You know where it's taken me, dear Lord God. You know the struggles and the battles that I have had, Lord God. I I, I give it over to you, Lord God. I give it over to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, my faith and trust is in you. I know that you care about me and you care about what I'm going through and you care about this mountain that I'm dealing with in the name of Jesus. Lord God, the enemy's tried to lie to me. He's tried to tell me other things, but by faith, I'm claiming, I'm believing, Lord God, that you're ministering by your spirit right now, right now. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Lord God, I'm looking at this mustard seed and I'm using it as a point of faith and a point of contact, Lord Jesus. Realizing that you told the disciples that if they had just a little bit of faith, if they put their faith and trust in you, if they didn't allow doubt to get in their heart and doubt to get in their mind, that you would reveal yourself to them, that you would reveal your plan, your purpose for them, that you would give them strength and joy and peace that goes beyond our understanding, Lord God. God, that your grace would be sufficient for us, Father God, that you would take the mountain out of our life and that you would glorify your name in our lives and in our situations. And instead of a mountain, instead of a trouble, instead of a difficulty, that you'd give us a testimony, Lord God. That you'd give us a testimony of your goodness. That you'd give us a testimony of your peace. That you'd give us a testimony of your presence, Lord God. That you'd give us a testimony of your delivering power. So this morning, dear Lord God, we assess honestly our situation. We look at that mountain, dear Lord God. We look at it square in the eyes. We look at every aspect of it. We look at the reality of it. We claim responsibility for everything that is our part in that mountain. But we also give responsibility to others that are a part of that mountain. And Lord God, today we begin to forgive them for their part. Begin to forgive them for what they've done that's brought this on us, Lord God. And as we release all those things, Lord God, we let, we let go of the mountain. We let go of the mountain and now we release it to you, Father God. Jesus, we give our mountain over to you. It's no longer our mountain, it's your mountain. We want to see your name glorified in this thing. We want to see your will be done. We want you to teach us what you want us to know in this process. We're open, dear Lord Jesus, for the teachable moment that we would grow in faith, grow in knowledge, grow in wisdom, grow in understanding, Lord, as you move the mountain in our life. Now, Lord, with thanksgiving, we give you praise we thank you for your goodness we thank you that you care so much about us that you took time in your house and in your service to remind us that you know us that you love us that you know the need and what we're going through and that you have a plan to take care of it all in the name of Jesus now Father God I pray that your assurance begins to replace any doubt. Father God, we pray together that your peace, your peace would overwhelm our hearts and our minds. That you would give us such a stability in our way of thinking, Lord God. Such a stability in our trust in you that the enemy cannot shake us, Lord God. And that Father God, every day when we get up, we'll renew our trust in you again and again and again until that day comes when that mountain is moved out of our lives we love you father god we ask for forgiveness for anything we've done wrong lord god and father god we ask that now your grace would move into our lives in such a way to empower us to live as fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ casting all our cares on you because you care for us and we give you the praise for it's in Jesus wonderful name we pray and the saints of God who believe and receive said amen and amen praise God praise God don't lose your mustard seed